as Yun Chen carried Miaoling through Iceland, she remarked that he could have left her alone. Despite her weakened state, she believed she could handle ordinary contestants and reasoned that she could surrender her battle points if she encountered stronger opponents. However, Yun Chen cautioned her about the dark followers, explaining that they were all dual-classed and possibly even had hidden professions. In addition, they are more interested in taking her life than her battle points. Miaoling questioned why they would target her instead of Yun Chen, given their past encounters. But Yun Chen pointed out that she had eliminated more dark followers than him in the past. Yun Chen also observed that Miaoling didn't seem surprised by the existence of dual-class fighters. She explained that her father, due to his high-ranking position, had informed her about them, but she hadn't expected to encounter dual hidden professions. She elaborated on the rarity and power of hidden professions, which required absorbing essence similar to the demon lord's essence, such as the god of war essence. To gain a dual profession, one would need to absorb essence from the heart of a four-time promoted player to gain higher attributes and a new profession. Yun Chen ponders the dark followers' true purpose that would make them go through so much effort. Arriving at the portal, they realized it was only the third day of the competition and the portal wouldn't reopen for another three days. Miaoling suggested Yun Chen continue hunting for battle points, but he insisted on staying to ensure her safety, noting that their current points secured their position in the top 100. On the final day of the elimination match, many contestants rushed towards the portal, enticed by the aroma of local cuisine. They found Miaoling and Yun Chen enjoying a meal together by the campfire, surprising them with their relaxed demeanor. They were definitely at a different league as the rest of them as they appeared to be on a vacation while the rest of them had been struggling to survive for the past few days. As the portal activated, signaling their departure, the staff welcomed them back and guided them to their designated area for processing. Their record logger would be collected later, and their scores would be tabulated to determine the top 100 contestants advancing to the second round. Yun Chen sought confirmation that the portal was the sole exit from Iceland, which the staff confirmed. Yun Chen then reported the presence of dark followers among the participants, all possessing dual class abilities. However, the staff dismissed his concerns, considering them unfounded given the security measures in place. Undeterred, Yun Chen proposed verifying their identities after apprehension, claiming to have prepared evidence. As contestants queued for inspection before departure, a commotion erupted, drawing the staff's attention. They discovered that the disturbance stemmed from the seeds previously planted by Xiao Jing on the dark followers, leading to their arrest for causing a public nuisance. In the Grand Commander's office, it was confirmed that the captured participants were indeed dark followers with dual-class abilities. Recognizing the severity of the situation, the staff emphasized the need to capture their leader, Alger, to disrupt the Advent Organization's plans. Upon hearing this, the Grand Commander commended the staff for their swift action and pledged to deploy resources accordingly. In a strange and ominous tone, the Grand Commander offered the staff a glass of wine for celebration for his efforts. Miaoling burst into laughter upon learning how Yun Chen had instructed Xiao Jing to plant flower thorn demon seeds on the three dark followers. She was relieved that they had finally been arrested. Yun Chen anticipated that Alger wouldn't be able to participate in the next day's competition. He then checked on Miaoling's condition, inquiring whether her curse had been lifted. She explained that she had attempted to seek assistance from a three-time promoted healer in the city, but they were all occupied with treating the injured contestants, most of whom hailed from powerful nations, including favorites from the five major countries. Shockingly, many were near death or cursed, rendering them unable to continue competing. The Holy Empire attributed the casualties to the fierce nature of the competition, but Miaoling suspected the Dark Follower's involvement, questioning whether their intentions extended beyond eliminating talented individuals. Recognizing Miaoling's inability to compete due to the curse, she offered to transfer all her battle points to Yun Chen to represent the Xian Long Kingdom in her stead. The following day, the top 100 participants were identified, preparing for the brutal arena competition broadcast globally. Meanwhile, at Dong Yun High School, Yun Chen's teacher expressed pride in his representation of their school, while jealousy simmered among other faculty members over his favor with the principal. At Jiangnan University, students eagerly awaited the upcoming match, with Yun Tang proudly proclaiming Yun Chen as her brother. Elsewhere, Nicole watched from the forest, teased by her mother about her interest in Yun Chen, the recipient of the elf amulet from Nicole. The next day, the top 100 participants were identified. These top 100 would compete in a brutal arena competition, which would be broadcast live globally. 
As the results of the first elimination match were announced, Alger, Princess Lukaini, and Yun Chen were announced as the top three. The crowd was astounded that the top contestant hailed from an unknown kingdom, with favorites like Miaoling and Okoto absent from the list. Miaoling expressed disbelief at Alger's continued presence and questioned why the host hadn't identified him as a dark follower yet. Alger gleefully observed the commotion, looking forward to what they had planned for later. As Yun Chen observed Alger's reappearance, he harbored a sense of unease, suspecting one reason why Alger hadn't been apprehended yet, even if he had hoped that he was incorrect. The host then outlined the rules for the second round, where participants would battle at random to score points for their kingdoms. The participants with the highest points would earn their kingdoms more resources. With the announcement of the round's commencement, the participants were transported to their respective arenas. Yun Chen's first opponent was a necromancer from the kingdom of Mohan, who underestimated him as a jobless class from Xianlong intent on swiftly ending the match, the necromancer summoned his undead army. However, Yun Chen used his shadow assassin skills to outmaneuver him, moving swiftly among the undead army's shadow. Soon, Yun Chen reappeared behind him with a dagger on his throat, ultimately forcing his surrender. Suddenly, they heard commotion from another match, revealing a player wielding skills and equipment from two professions, the rumored dual-class player. Furthermore, they had sensed the dark energy coursing through this player, who was none other than Alger. The crowd was astonished to discover that this dark follower was a dual-class player, shattering their perception of them as cowardly individuals who lurked in the shadows. Alger, fueled by the surge of dark energy, exuded an air of invincibility. His opponent, a Templar from the kingdom of Thea, cursed the Dark Follower for disrupting the competition and unleashed his skills. Despite being a formidable opponent capable of battling three-time promoted players, the Templar fell swiftly to Alger's lethal strike from the back, leaving the crowd in disbelief at his instantaneous demise. As Alger stood triumphantly atop the Templar's lifeless body, he addressed the broadcasting drones, proclaiming that the existence of dual classes could no longer be concealed by the military. He declared his intention to defeat all of their so-called geniuses, instilling fear in the hearts of humanity. Across the world, spectators watched in shock as Alger's dominance unfolded, prompting some to feel helplessness at the top talent's defeats at Alger's hands while some began to yearn for the power of dual classes and even contemplated joining the dark side. Meanwhile, in the command center, disbelief spread as the situation escalated beyond control. While some suggested shutting down the broadcast to prevent further chaos, the Grand Commander argued that it was too late, as Alger had already declared war against humanity. Shutting the broadcast off now would cause the public to make wild speculations instead. Recognizing the Advent Organization's true goal, to reveal the truth about dual classes and tempt humans to embrace the dark side, the Grand Commander proposed allowing the competition to continue, placing faith in Princess Lukaini to confront Alger. In subsequent matches, Alger continued to obliterate his opponents, taunting the crowd with disdain for their so-called top talents. Demoralization swept through the audience as Alger systematically eliminated renowned players, leaving many to wonder if anyone could defeat him. Miaoling seethed with anger, lamenting the one-sided nature of the matches due to their earlier plans that eliminated many top talents during the first round, including herself. Enraged, she vowed to crush Alger if she weren't weakened by the curse. As Alger awaited his next opponent, Princess Lukaini emerged in the arena, instilling hope in the hearts of the spectators due to her status as the crowd favorite and the strongest contender from the Holy Empire. As she felt the audience's expectation of her, she summoned her wings, eager to answer all their prayers. However, the crowd was taken aback to see her wings shrouded in black, a stark departure from the angelic wings they expected. According to rumors, her birth was blessed by the gods and she was supposed to have the power of the angels but the wings looked nothing like the wings of an angel. A local stepped forward to offer an explanation, recounting a past encounter where Princess Lukaini faced danger at the hands of the dark followers during her travels. In a selfless act to protect her followers, she relinquished her sacred profession, embracing a darker power to ensure their safety. Though her sacrifice granted her formidable strength, it also tainted her once pure wings with darkness. Nonetheless, the local believed in her nobility and ability to vanquish evil once again. Amidst the focus on Alger's dominance, another participant quietly garnered attention for winning matches at an astonishing speed, none other than Yun Chen, the jobless class from the Xian Long Kingdom, who had yet to taste defeat. The host announced the long-awaited clash between the Holy Empire's leading genius and the Dark Follower, set to commence imminently.
he implored everyone to pray for Princess Lucinai's success against the malevolent Alger. The crowd fervently cheered for Lucaini, hoping she would prevail against Alger, as failure against a dark follower they would have no chance against a demon descendant and demon lords. Alger, irritated by their persistent support, pondered how many more of their comrades he must dispatch before they quieted. Meanwhile, Lucaini relished in the communal prayers, finding comfort in the collective faith. Initiating the assault with a flurry of feathers, Lucaini watched as Alger skillfully evade each projectile. In a taunting tone, she questioned whether Alger would dare to confront them now if they had not resorted to underhanded tactics of eliminating top talents during the survival match before round two of the competition. Unleashing a powerful tornado that could pose a threat to even a three-time promoted player, Lucaini earned praises from the crowd as it enveloped the arena. However, Alger vanished amidst the chaos, leading Lucaini to suspect he had employed camouflage. Suddenly reappearing behind her, Alger swung his sword at Lucaini, who managed to block the attack with her wings but was still forcefully thrown to the ground. Recognizing her inability to overpower him due to his high attributes, Lucaini opted to put distance between them. Alger then fired a whirlwind skill at her, knocking her off her guard and swiftly moved forward to grab her by her neck. He clarified that his preemptive attacks on the top talent were not out of fear but rather to minimize their risks to as low as possible. Showcasing his advanced wizard skills, he revealed a third hidden profession. Commending Lucaini for her correct guess about his third hidden profession, Alger summoned a dark portal, proclaiming his intentions to send her to the dark world. As Lucaini begged for help, Alger pushed her into the portal and she disappeared in front of everyone, leaving the crowd in stunned silence. They could only imagine the tortures that she would face in the hands of the demon lords in the dark world. As subsequent opponents surrendered to Alger's might, the audience's desperation grew, realizing they were ill-equipped to confront such overwhelming power. Amidst the despair, however, Yun Chen emerged as the lone challenger willing to face Alger head-on, boldly declaring an end to the madness. In the heart of the dead swamp, the Ice Queen presided over three defeated Dark followers in the throne room in the secret headquarters of the Advent Organization. Despite Xian Long Kingdom's efforts to clear their hidden bases, this stronghold remained untouched, until now. Grand Commander Elvik, confronted by the Ice Queen, questioned her continued involvement even after retiring from the military. Xia Qingcheng, unfazed, expressed her determination to eradicate what she saw as pests. She then noted that he didn't seem too affected by the fact that the Advent organization was about to be eliminated. Elvik, however, remained confident, foreseeing the rise of the Advent organization within three years, bolstered by his son, Alger's, triumph in the global competition. As they watched the live broadcast of Alger's match against Yun Chen, Xia Qingcheng remarked that his vision for the Advent organization was on the condition that his son, Alger, would be able to take on the overwhelming challenge ahead of him, one that he would never overcome. Alger, disdainful of Yun Chen's persistence, prepared to face him in the arena. He would gladly grant Yun Chen's death wish after confronting each other for so long. Yun Chen, undeterred, swiftly maneuvered behind Alger, carrying another defeated contestant. Alger was caught by surprise by Yun Chen's speed. Yun Chen acknowledged the courage of those who faced Alger. Despite their defeat, they had stood their ground till the end and retained more honor than Alger, who would do anything for power. Yun Chen then summoned many whirlwinds to send these fallen players off the arena. The crowd began to recognize Yun Chen's valor, finding hope in his presence, much to Alger's annoyance. Intent on extinguishing this hope, Alger launched a powerful attack at Yun Chen, who deftly evaded it with divine flash and countered with his own assault. With a swing of his spear, Alger was sent crashing at the barrier of the arena and Yun Chen quickly followed up with another flame hurricane. Alger attempted to counter his flame hurricane with his own hurricane attack but Yun Chen's attacks overpowered his own. Surprised by Yun Chen's prowess, Alger found himself battered against the arena barrier after being hit by the flame hurricane. He couldn't believe that despite his high attributes and hidden profession, he was still damaged by Yun Chen's skillful strikes. Yun Chen, poised to deliver the final blow, discovered it was an illusion as his spear passed through Alger's body. This was exactly how he had avoided Lucinai's attacks earlier. Realizing Alger's use of Phantom Hunter's unique skill, multiple phantoms, Yun Chen remained focused, identifying the main body among the illusions. 
Alger's taunts were met with heavy punches from Yun Chen at the main body, leading to Alger's collapse on the ground. Standing over the fallen Alger, Yun Chen garnered impressed murmurs from the crowd, who initially believed Alger to be defeated. However, they soon witnessed Alger's injuries miraculously healing at an alarming rate. Boasting of being the recipient of the blessings from one of the 72 pillar demon lords, Alger declared himself invincible against Yun Chen's attacks. Enraged, Yun Chen relentlessly pounded on Alger, aiming to halt his recovery. Yet, a surge of dark energy erupted from Alger, signifying a transformation beyond human. Alger, empowered by consuming two god of war essences and possessing three hidden professions, refused to accept defeat by someone he considered beneath him. Activating the buffs from his three hidden professions, Alger unleashed a thunderous attack that caused a huge explosion and followed by a penetrating spear made of dark energy. The crowd watched in shock as Alger's destructive power intensified after his transformation, fearing Yun Chen's impending defeat. However, Yun Chen, assuming his ten thousand will form, intercepted Alger's assault, stunning him with his resilience. Employing his mage hand, Yun Chen delivered a devastating blow that sent Alger crashing to the ground with a flick of a finger. Yun Chen continued his relentless attack on Alger. With another powerful swing of his sword, sending Alger flying into the ground. The spectators marveled as the intense battle between Yun Chen and Alger that even managed to damage the arena itself, designed to withstand battles among elite players. Alger, astonished by his inability to match Yun Chen's prowess, revealed his reliance on a blessing from the top demon lord, ensuring his immortality despite Yun Chen's assaults. Anticipating the side effects of Yun Chen's current powerful form, Alger believed victory was inevitable once Yun Chen's skills expired. Unfazed by Alger's resilience, Yun Chen unleashed a powerful abyssal inferno, engulfing Alger in flames. As Yun Chen continued to unleash flames upon Alger, the crowd erupted in cheers, hoping to see Alger burn to a crisp. As Alger collapsed, Yun Chen's ten thousand will form faded away, leaving him in a weakened state with diminished attributes. Nevertheless, he was relieved that the fight had ended just in time, garnering cheers from the crowd who placed hope in him to combat the Dark World. However, someone noticed Alger's hand moving, realizing that Yun Chen, weakened, stood no chance against him now. Alger, mocking Yun Chen's attempt to burn him alive, struggled to rise. Yet, Yun Chen reminded him of the soul-burning effect of his flames, causing significant damage beyond physical burns. Even if he could not destroy his physical body, it would still be able to deal significant damage to his soul after being burnt for so long. Alger soon felt the damage to his soul and began to lose consciousness. However, he was resolved not to let Yun Chen live, fearing the disaster he could bring to the Dark World after witnessing his prowess. Miaoling understood Alger's intentions as he made his final prayers and summoned a dark portal, locking onto Yun Chen. Yun Chen attempted to teleport away, but the portal, locked onto his soul-chasing mark, followed him relentlessly. With no means to evade it, Yun Chen faced impending doom until Miaoling intervened, pulling Yun Chen out of the way to save him. However, Yun Chen warned her that she shouldn't have come to save him as the portal, locked onto his soul chasing mark, would follow him until it hit the target. Together, they vanished into the dark portal, leaving the crowd in disbelief at Alger's desperate act. As Alger's body disintegrated, revealing his final victory in sending Yun Chen and Yaoling to the dark world, shock rippled through the crowd. Nicole and others lamented this outcome, while Headmaster Yi regretted sending them to the competition. He was also furious that the Holy Empire did nothing to stop this from happening. Instructor Li delivered more grim news, Yun Tang, overwhelmed by shock at her brother's disappearance, lost control of her powers. Time accelerated around her, causing decay and aging to everything and everyone within the vicinity. Elvik gloated over humanity's despair, believing it to be the Advent Organization's triumph. However, Xiao Yu silenced him with her chains, infuriated by his callousness. Concerned about Yun Chen, Xiao Ling asked about Yun Chen's situation. Xia Qing Cheng reassured the group that he was not dead but merely transported to the Dark World. She had intended to bring him to the Dark World for a visit and this merely brought forward this plan. Placing her trust in Yun Chen's resilience, she believed he would survive this ordeal.
Suddenly, a portal materialized, and Yun Chen and Miao Ling tumbled out into the unfamiliar surroundings of the Dark World. Surveying their surroundings, they realized this realm was unlike anything they had imagined. Miao Ling's screams pierced the air, signaling her struggle to adapt to the dense darkness energy that saturated the atmosphere. Reacting swiftly, Yun Chen administered a mana potion to replenish his magic reserves and summoned his staff. Employing a purifying skill, he provided temporary relief to Miao Ling, dispersing the oppressive dark energy around her. Aware of his own weakened state and limited potion supply, Yun Chen knew he couldn't sustain the purifying skill indefinitely. Their respite was brief, interrupted by the sudden appearance of a demon descendant who fled at the sight of humans, fearing they posed a threat to his village and murder the villagers, a reaction that surprised Yun Chen. Though reluctant to let him go, Yun Chen and Miao Ling understood their vulnerability in this hostile environment. As Yun Chen drank another potion, he cautioned that the air was filled with dark energy and his purifying skill was only a temporary solution. Miao Ling gradually acclimated by tapping into one of her two remaining elements that she mastered, the yin and yang energy. The yin energy was similar in nature to the darkness that surrounded them, allowing her to adapt to it quickly. However, their respite was short-lived as the demon descendant returned with reinforcements, fueled by animosity toward the intruders. Despite the demons being weaker individually, Yun Chen's weakened state and Miao Ling's cursed condition left them at a disadvantage, unable to withstand an attack from a group of them. Without hesitation, Miao Ling hoisted Yun Chen onto her back, their only option to flee from the advancing demons. Evading the onslaught, Miao Ling boasted of her ability to dodge every attack, concealing the injuries she sustained while protecting Yun Chen. Determined to find safety, she led them to a cave she had scouted, she then threw Yun Chen into the cave as she instructed him to stay inside, the lone entrance offering a defensible position. It would be an ideal location for her to make her last stand. However, their refuge also posed a vulnerability, with no alternative escape routes. With Yun Chen's weakened state persisting for another 18 minutes, he recognized his limited ability to assist, urging Miao Ling to flee if necessary. But Miao Ling, resolute and brave, refused to abandon him, vowing to defend them both at any cost. At the mouth of the cave, Miao Ling valiantly repelled the relentless onslaught of attackers, activating her nine-tail fox mode to deflect incoming spells. Despite her efforts, she sustained injuries due to her weakened state, prompting concern from Yun Chen, who remained inside, aware that his presence outside would only exacerbate the danger. Resolved to join the fray once his debuff subsided, Yun Chen remained composed, earning Miao Ling's admiration for his restraint. Recognizing the impracticality of using her elemental magic that consumed too much mana in her depleted state, Miao Ling opted for close-range combat in her fox form. The demon descendants, intent on eliminating the human threat, charged relentlessly, met with Miao Ling's fierce resistance. Despite being outnumbered and besieged from all sides, Miao Ling fought tirelessly to defend the cave entrance, ultimately collapsing from exhaustion after a protracted struggle. Admired by the demon descendants for her resilience, Miao Ling expressed her determination to protect Yun Chen. Although she was not sure of his methods, Yun Chen had unlimited potential and was growing stronger and stronger. If he continues to grow, he would be a powerful player for humanity. Miao Ling was willing to sacrifice her life for Yun Chen's. As the demon descendants launched another wave of attack at Miao Ling, she knew that this was it for her as she no longer had any energy left. She knew that Yun Chen would be smart enough to buy more time for himself until the end of his debuffs. Miao Ling braced herself for the final onslaught, resigned to her fate but saddened by the premature end of their date. Just as the demons launched their fatal assault, Yun Chen emerged, determined to continue their date. Though three seconds remained on his weakening debuffs, Yun Chen activated his invincible mode to weather the assault. Frustrated by their inability to harm him, the demon descendants intensified their attacks, only to be swiftly dispatched by Yun Chen's formidable demonic flame punch upon the debuff's expiration. With the immediate threat quelled, Yun Chen cautioned that their ordeal was far from over, mindful of the soul chaser mark that branded him for demon surveillance. Applying Poseidon Elephant Cream to conceal the mark, Yun Chen resolved to seek refuge in the distant mountains, drawn by an inexplicable allure. Meanwhile, a demon, guided by the scent of the vanished soul chaser mark, arrived at the cave, seeking confirmation of Yun Chen's presence. 
Based on the description provided, the Broken Knight Demon, a domain master, could guess that the human that was spotted was indeed Yun Chen although he was not sure how he managed to cover the Soul Chaser mark to avoid further surveillance. He then surmised their likely destination, the Forbidden Mountains, a place forbidden by the gods to enter. Confident in their eventual capture, the Broken Knight Demon dismissed any hope of escape, knowing the treacherous terrain that even one of the 72 Pillar Demon Lords couldn't overcome, would ensure their confinement. In a remote mountain village, Yun Chen diligently performed his daily regimen of push-ups as dictated by the system. Miaoling, observing his dedication despite their circumstances in the dark world, marveled at his commitment. Yun Chen, keeping his true motives hidden, emphasized the importance of physical training without divulging his need to accrue attribute points and skill advancements from the system's daily tasks. Having emerged victorious in the global competition by defeating Alger, Yun Chen received rewards. His first reward was the space soil for crafting space-related treasure and expanding one's inventory space. It was a material that was incredibly malleable. His second reward was a boundary break stone to enhance equipment. The third was the lucky potion that needed no introduction. The last reward was a mysterious blank blueprint for crafting armor. He deduced that it is a special item granted by the system to create an equipment and the grade of the equipment depends on the materials used. Intrigued by the possibilities, Yun Chen resolved to gather superior materials to forge formidable armor sets. With Miaoling's inventory stocked with provisions, they found temporary reprieve from hunger in the abandoned village they stumbled upon. Reflecting on the competition, Yun Chen expressed concern over the Holy Empire's inaction during Alger's disruptive antics, including sneaking in forbidden cursed tools despite regulations. Miaoling, sensing his suspicions, urged restraint, emphasizing their primary goal of survival. Yun Chen realized that Miaoling also had the same suspicions and just did not want to face the truth. Approaching the Forbidden Mountain's edge, Yun Chen and Miaoling encountered an impassable barrier, their only route after attracting demon attention. Yun Chen had scouted the area and knew that there were no signs of life in the nearby area. With their remaining supply of food left, they could not make a detour to avoid this area and had no choice but to move forward. Yun Chen had also experienced a strangely familiar feeling in the mountains, causing him to be curious on how was hiding within. When Miaoling felt the barrier, she thought it was unbreakable. Undeterred, Yun Chen felt a familiar pull and wanted to investigate what was in the mountains. Touching the barrier inexplicably opened up the barrier, leading to a path to a cave. As they moved into the cave to investigate, they saw an area full of coffins. Sensing danger, Yun Chen cautioned Miaoling against opening the coffins, his unease mounting. As the familiar feeling grew stronger and stronger and he wondered if there was someone he knew here. He then thought of another grim possibility, perhaps his corpse is here too and this would be his final resting ground. As they retreated, Yun Chen's emotional reaction alarmed Miaoling, prompting her to follow his lead. Meanwhile, at the mountain's edge, the Broken Knight Demon, astonished by the barrier breach, recalled ancient legends of the mountain's arrival from the sky out of nowhere decades ago, accompanied by celestial phenomena. The impact caused all life within a radius of thousands of miles to be completely annihilated. Even after decades, no life was able to be formed here. The only being able to cause this would be the gods. The destruction of the surrounding area seemed to have served as a warning not to approach. Nonetheless, it had attracted many demons here to investigate, including the 72 Pillars Demon Lords. Despite decades of investigation yielding no answers, the mountains remained impenetrable and they could not find any signs of the gods and all gave up in the end. He couldn't believe that the area that was previously off-limits to even the strongest demon lord would be open now. As this was already above his pay grade, he decided to report this to the Broken Knight Demon Lord immediately. 